leaving Mr. Bolivar here to keep an eye on things. We are about to embark on a most important mission. You're planning on sending my vampire wife after my boy? The Strain. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, The Strain, Season 2, Episode 3, Fort Defiance, Alonzo Duraldi, William Bibiani. Um, okay, I just want to start this with asking the question, wouldn't the NYPD have a protocol in place by now that just in case the person you're chasing down an alley is a Strigoi, maybe don't engage right away or shine some light on them, something? I think <laughs> if you pay attention to the news, we'll see that there aren't an, a lot of efficiently... <laughs> efficiently enforced protocols at any particular. I, I guess so. It was just like, hey, that guy looks like a punk. Let's get him. What if he's a Strigoi? Then we'll get him. <laughs> like, I don't really know. Like, I... I, th the opening of this episode is kind of almost disappointingly straightforward to me. All we really see is that Bolivar is still really vain mm. and carrying that wig around. Right, right. I guess it's kind of neat that he can call forth the horde, like in, like the god and left for dead. But like, it's just it was just like, oh, and then he's still around. We'll, we'll, <laughs> he'll, he might be important later. We'll see. <laughs> and then he becomes uh, Eldridge Palmer's bodyguard, which thus far he didn't do much. Guarding of his Not body. Not so much, no. He, he, let, he let the lights do all the work. His fabulous disco ball of that vampire was, that death. Was, that was pretty great, yeah. That was cool. I haven't seen that before. That uh, was kind of yeah, neat. definitely. That was kind of neat. I want to, the thing that I took away from this episode, there's actually a lot that went on in this episode. Yes. I thought this was a pretty fun episode. Um, but the thing that I took away more than anything else is that Zack is the worst child in the oh world. Oh my God, feed that kid to the vampires already. Oh yeah, no, seriously, like that... <laughs> At some point, it's just culling the herd. Like at I mean, some point, it's like <laughs> if vampires are gonna like destroy us all, then only I the mean, strong shall survive. Granted, yeah. Ephraim not the greatest dad in the world. No, maybe but, not the best at sort of you know object lessons in life. Uh, you know, at, at, here's the thing: vampires are attacking. Your mom is a vampire. You're a little confused. Okay, fine, I get that. Uh, when dad tries to explain how we're going to stop the vampires and save the world. You destroy it all because he's not letting you see your mom. You're, pra you're possibly dooming the planet the humanity, because yeah. you don't get to see your mom. And this is not a small child. This child is old enough to understand basic ideas. Yeah, he's so shoving his face into a vampire and saying, "This is what your mom is," <laughs> might tough have to love. be the way to go. Yeah. It's tough love, but I gotta tell you, <clears throat> that kid deserved worse. I gotta yeah. seriously. It's so frustrating. It's it's hard to put a kid on. A genre show or in a genre movie like this mm. because the stakes are so simplistic and high that if they don't get it if they're not on board you, you want to slap them right I, I, I don't condone child violence obviously but like you want to just get them out of the movie they're ruining everything they're stupid they have to be saved normally children I understand it them to that I, I guess they're okay but like in this show, shut up! Yeah, he's kind of dead weight, and and it, it, the show is pretty much just leaving him around to be mommy magnet, you know. Basically, yeah, he's uh, he's a plot point for that showdown. So I love I love Ephraim's message to the leader, which is like, I will kill that kid and me <laughs> before Good. anything happens. Like, fine, you know. Good, finally, let's get to it. Yeah, let's get to it. Uh, you you brought up uh, Samantha Mathis, I think. Yes, love Samantha Mathis. I love her big press conference. With all the decapitated Strigoi. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Holy crap. Well, you know, look, you put your you put your enemies' heads on pikes, you know, and yeah. you stick them outside the walls of the city. You but know? what's so great, it's a really well-handled scene because it is such a generic press conference before that. She's at the podium. <laughs> this is my what what is it? This is my cousin Mike. Yeah. You know, he's he's my Aunt's kid and her husband died in the towers. Everyone's like, "Oh, very nice." Yeah, no, no. Well, I, I, yeah. well done. I, I, Mike. Love, I, love, I love the knee-jerk 9/11s though, because any politician yeah. will still milk that if they can. Exactly. You know? And then whisk, and there's like half people are going, "Oh, are we doing this now?" <laughs> and then the other half are like, "Yeah, yeah. we're doing this now." <laughs> yeah. And I can't tell. It's interesting because we're at a point where we can't tell if Samantha Mathis is going to be this. Horrible, like she's gonna be like the new enemy because she's gonna get really corrupt and be like, what was it, like the the governor on The Walking Dead uh, or whatever. She's gonna like just take it way too far and become sure. a new enemy, or if, if, she she's, if she's just a hero and like in, in some respects, and because she's doing something. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say she's, what you will. She made Staten Island safe for human and, beings. And really, you know, there's that moment of horror at just like, oh, that's what the politicians are doing. Uh, how many heads have been decapitated by our heroes so far? This is nothing. True. Yeah, I mean, you know? early in the episode, we see uh, 
Uh, Cetrakian? Thank you. I yeah. was blanking on his name. Really, like, just, whoosh, you know. Just whack a guy's head off. Sword somebody off. And it's funny. I'm glad this episode finally touches on something that I kind of suspected all along. He's 92 years old and pretty spry. Yeah. I was like, there's some, uh, just just because there was something about his obsession with the Strigoi and his encounters with them that made me think, all right, there's got to be some, I mean, he's not actually one, but there's something going on there's here. There's something keeping him alive. Yeah, plus, the, yeah. plus just the math of how old is he supposed yeah. to be? He, you know, so. Yeah, no, that, that was driving me nuts, too. And I thought we were just going to say, well, he's a badass. Yes. But, uh, no, I'm glad. It's 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 something that I hope we can get into more later. Yeah. later. Um, it, it does tie into, I mean, obviously, Leland Palmer is doing okay. Eldridge. Yeah, Eldridge. Eldridge. <laughs> Twin Peaks. Um, <laughs> when is Twin Peaks coming out? We're going to review but, that. But, of course, yeah. but the question being, though, is he connected enough? That the master is like always. That's why he all, they always know where he is and what the, he's gonna do. Oh, I see. I don't think so because I think if that were the case, they probably would have stormed their compound mm, by now and probably would have known that they're trying to create this virus. Right, 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 right. I don't. Right. I don't think we're. So the hive mind bad. only goes so far on this. Well, I mean, he doesn't actually. He's like he's using like extract of the worm. He's not actually like sure. The, and that's the thing that happens now. <laughs> because, show. as you like to say, because reasons. All right, I want to talk about uh, Vasily and Dutch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Dutch and Lee are great, and mm. they are so cute when he's, like, feeding her. And she's all just like, mmm. <laughs> Ritz crackers. Uh, and then we finally kind of wrapped up, or I guess we've wrapped up, the whole her girlfriend who disappeared in like season uh, one. I feel like I have more questions now, actually, oh, after yeah? that encounter with the mother. How like, so? What was she talking about with the paintings and the, uh, the hang on, I wrote this Oh, down. yeah, the, uh, the paintings are new. I guess she had some paintings. No, Maybe no, she painted her. Oh, you marked her. You marked her. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't. No, that's okay. why, okay, right. that's I, why guess, I had more questions. All right, now. fair enough. I guess I really wasn't thinking about it. I just thought, like, emotionally, we're just sort of like, and now that's done. But I guess mm. there is more to get to. Uh, I love, I love the line about, like, you know, I, I refuse to support your lifestyle. And I'm not talking about the gay thing. <laughs> like, okay, then what are you talking about? Now <laughs> right. I really want to know. Well, she was a criminal. She did crash Oh, well, the that's internet, true. You know, yeah, like, she was the big hacker. Just, right. just involving her at all. Uh, but I, I've got to say, for basic cable... Kudos on the blowjob noise. Uh, that's a really vivid sound effect. It doesn't last long, yeah. but that's just like, wow. I don't know if I've heard an a, a audible blowjob noise on basic cable or network TV before. That was, that was, a, that was, that was a moment. That was very special. <laughs> and then afterwards, <laughs> Vasily's like, we worked up an appetite. And she's like, we? <laughs> but, you know, and again, yeah. and, I, and I, I don't watch Walking Dead. I assume these, this is, these are the issues that come up in Walking Dead. Like, what is, what is too much? You know, mm. when, when, you, uh, when you're dealing with this kind of enemy and this kind yeah. of, you know, crisis. Well, that's actually, like, the one thing about this show that does feel relevant. And, you know, you can see this whole thing as a post-9-11 allegory if you want. Sure. We're certainly getting to that point now where it's like, what do we do? It, it, the difference is that there's a constant legitimate threat, yeah. like, on the streets at all Why times. Why are we so, suspicious there, and it, should we be? Uh... And it's almost like Red Dawn, but with vampires, <laughs> you know? Like, we're, we're, how far can we go? Well, when things are this bad, pretty far, mm. you know? So... It, it it's interesting when it raises these questions. I think that's when the show really perks up for me. Mm -hmm. It's when they do something really fun with the vampire genre. Yeah. Um, I I just love just yanking into like a vampire's throat and pulling out this like eight foot tendril. Ugh. We're like, where are they keeping that thing? What <laughs> else is in there? Well, like, yeah. After a while, it's like you expect it's going to turn to the flags of all nations or yeah. something. Like it's the magic trick. You know? There's there's a fruit by out. the foot T-shirt someone needs to make. <laughs> with the Strigoi from The Strain, and I would totally buy that and wear it on the show. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's it, that's kind of where I feel like this show lives. We've looked at New York as a place that overcomes great tragedy, bands together, does what it has to do, but then we come to the questions of how far can we go. Right. I was in New York shortly after 9-11, and there were just armed soldiers on the street with yeah. us, like a... Really, I don't know what they were exactly, but like they look like assault rifles. They're just giant guns, just hanging out, just just in case. And it was terrifying. Yeah. It actually scared me more than anything else. But like that's that's a question. That's a great issue to raise in something like this. In the world of this show, do we know have they gotten to the mainland, or are they all just still in New York? I th well, theoretically, they're they've been on the mainland for a really long time. They're just this particular strain. Right, but I'm, what I'm saying is, like, there, I know there was some discussion early on about, like, you know, getting crossing the bridge and going to the, like, 
uh, is in in the world of this show is all this stuff now starting to happen in Connecticut, you know, and in Jersey. It would be nice to affect, to look at that. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I do. Yeah. I don't because I don't know. They don't. They never mention it. So it's I was it's just curious. very isolated. Mm. The show in terms of its focus, it's basically yeah. Zatrakian's past and New York. Right. Uh, so it would be nice to see. Like I'm hoping, like as the show goes on that the infection just spreads and spreads and spreads and gets worse and this becomes like almost an international thing. Yeah. Like we can, after season two, we contagion. get out of New York. Yeah, like contagion, exactly, yeah. like something like that. So please peel back Gwyneth Paltrow's scalp again. Come on, we all loved that. It's like the best thing she ever did. That and <laughs> that and that. That and the head in the box? <laughs> well, I was gonna say that and the berry crumble recipe in her cookbook. But anyway, you know, we all have our favorite Gwyneth moments, I guess. Anyway, anyway so uh, the join, strain. <laughs> Thank you. Join us next week. We'll see what they're telling us and what we're telling you. Keep straining. <laughs>